welcome to the Vanderbilt Park United Methodist Church in East Flatbush. We're so grateful for you tuning in today. We don't take your presence or your viewership for granted. Welcome to worship of the Church of the Sweet, Sweet Spirit. This is the call to worship. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voices of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Please join us now for our prayer of invocation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we embrace the joy and victory that comes with being in relationship with our Savior. On this day, we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and guide us in our worship. We rebuke the powers of darkness, every evil manifestation, and every distraction from every source. May the power of God be manifested in this service today. And all God's people said, amen. Each and every week, we ask you to remember in your time of prayer and devotion, our sick and shut in, when we gather together and even through virtual church, we speak their names and we pray for them. So this morning, we are praying for the following individuals. We're praying for Charles Attilis, Theomanda Boyce, Vivian Brewster, Ina Fong Choi, Wilbert Christie, Ina Cross, Kathleen Dash, Lynette Douglas, Marlene Griffith, Daphne Haynes, Leona Hope, Polly Jr., Norma Lee, Beryl London, Keith Mahoney, Terry Middow, Alva Morgan, Phyllis Pinnock, Hilda Seeley, Shirley Seeley, Claudette Silvera, Ruby Watson, Colin Welch, Yvonne Young, and the family of Evangelist Rubenstein McClure. Let us pray. Lord, you know the needs of every name that was called. You know beyond and above what any doctor or medical professional has been able to diagnose because you, O oh God, created every one of their bodies. And so we lean ultimately upon you and your healing power, O oh God. We pray for the divine miracle of healing to take place in their bodies, for your healing virtue to flow through their bodies and their bodies respond in obedience and be healed, oh God. Heal them 100% totally. We pray not just for them, but for those that care for them, their caregivers, oh God. We pray that they do not grow weary in doing well on their behalf. We pray as well during this time of physical challenge in their lives that all of their needs are met, that they do not go lacking, oh God. And we also pray, oh God, that they realize that they are never alone, that you promised and you keep your promise to never leave them nor forsake them. Holy Spirit, embrace them now as we pray this prayer. Let them know that they are loved, they are cared for, and you are there with them. This we pray in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, and all God's people said, amen. Just a few announcements. We still have a limited number of glass, of gloves and masks available for those of you that need them. All you have to do is contact the church to inform us if you're in need of gloves or masks. As well, we still have canned food and dried goods. Uh, contact the church office if you'd like to have some of them delivered. Our goal is to have particularly our senior citizens going out to the grocery store as little as possible. So if you're in need of any uh, dried foods or canned goods, please let us know so that we can provide those for you. As well, we are continuing to accept don donations of canned goods and fried goods, canned food and dried goods um, so that we can continue to serve members of the church as well as those in our community. We are grateful because even during a time of the pandemic, Vanderveer Park is still caring for its members and its communities. And it's only because of your generosity and your giving that we're able to continue that ministry. So we thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving and your donations. It's giving time, church. 
I know you're just as excited as I am that we are able to give. And the only reason why we were able to give is because Christ gave to us. We are able to tithe because we do have increase. You can't tithe from your increase unless you already have increase. God has provided for us. And so from that, we provide for the Lord's church and for ministry to continue. There are many ways for you to give. You can give via text to 77977. And in the text box, just put VPUMC give one word, VPUMC give, or via the church website, which is VanderveerParkUMC.org. We also have a church app, which is available in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. As well, you can mail your tithes and offerings to the church office at Vanderveer Park United Methodist Church, 3114 Glenwood Road, Brooklyn, New York, 11210. If you're uncomfortable uh, giving via electronically or sending in the mail, please call the church office and we will make arrangements to have your tithes and offerings picked up as well. We appreciate your faithful giving. Um, um, because of you, we're able to continue this work. Let us pray, saints. Lord, we thank you for the bounty that you have blessed us with. And it is from that, O oh God, we return to you your tithe and we render our offerings. Bless these offerings, O oh God, and these people in their obedience to your word. May their debts be canceled, their cupboards be full, and every single need in their life be met. This we pray in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Now we're doing this a little backwards today, but I do want you to repeat our giving declaration. It's so important because it says something about the character of our ministry. Altogether, I am a benevolent believer. Therefore, I am a grateful and cheerful giver. I sow into this church because I believe in the vision and ministry of this church. Because I am a tither, I am not a beggar or a borrower, but a lender. And I expect the windows of heaven to pour out blessings too big for me to contain. And God will rebuke the devourer for my sake. Therefore, I will share my blessings with my family, my neighbors, and the world. Amen. Prepare now for the Lord's Supper. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus found himself at table with his disciples. And before him was the bread which he lifted, he broke. And he bowed his head and prayed to his father, saying, Blessed are you, O God, ruler of all the world. You have given us the grain by which we make the bread. And likewise, he lifted the chalice and again bowed and prayed to his father, Baruch Atal, Adonai Hashem, Melech HaOlam, Eloheinu, Borei Peri HaGafen. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of all the world, you have given us the fruit of the vine by which we make the wine. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's 
offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. And we praise the Father, we praise the Son, we praise the blessed Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forever. And let us all pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you at this time, wherever you are, to take the bread that is before you and the wine. We shall commune together. We receive these words from the Apostle Paul that Jesus Christ on that night took the bread that was before them after breaking and blessing it. He said to his disciples, this bread represents my body, which was broken for you. Take it. Eat ye all of it. And then he lifted the chalice and he said, This wine is the New Testament, representing my blood, which was shed for the remission of your sins. Take it and drink ye all of it. Just as the disciples departed with joy, singing a hymn, we bid to you to go forth, remembering our connection to the one who sacrificed himself for us.
I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some sleepless nights But when I look around and think things over All of my good days Outweigh my bad days I won't complain This morning as I was thinking about that song it made me think of Supervisor Evangelist Rubenstein McClure, whom we recently lost. And in addition to those names that have been called in our sick and shut in and bereft families, I want you to add the McClure family to that list. We have truly lost the songbird of the East. So we honor her this morning and we pray for her family in their hour of bereavement. We want to ask you to join us in our church declaration. All together, we declare this church to be a church that welcomes the Holy Spirit enthusiastically, embraces holiness totally, believes the Bible conclusively, worships the Lord exclusively, and loves one another exhaustively. Amen. Out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, we're going to read just a few of the verses of Scripture that add emphasis to our sermon this morning. Matthew, chapter 14, first, beginning with verse 13, and then verse 19. Verse 13 reads, Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot and from the towns. Now to verse 19. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. This morning we want to briefly speak in your hearing on the subject, leading in the midst of a crisis. Will you say it with me? Leading in the midst of a crisis. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and all that your word is to us. Your word is truth and truth liberates us. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, through thy word. Prick our ears that we might hear what the Spirit is saying. Prick our hearts that we might believe and have the courage to obey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Leading in the midst of a crisis. With all of the texts that we are reading, studying, and preaching from during this pandemic crisis, we are asking the question, what does the Scripture say that can help us navigate during a time of twin crisis? What does the scripture say that can help us navigate during a time of twin crisis? Because the truth is we have two crises going on right now. One, of course, the obvious health pandemic, but also the crisis of white supremacy, racial inequality, injustice that has pervaded our nation is the other crisis that seems to be peaking at a time when the health pandemic is also peaking. So what does the scripture say to us that helps us, particularly leaders? How does the scripture address leadership in the time of the type of crises that we are experiencing? And this scripture does in fact speak to the notion of leadership in the time of a crisis. It shows us Jesus, and our text begins by using the word this, when Jesus heard this, the particular this 
that verse 13 is referring to is a report that was given to Jesus. You see, the disciples of John had come to Jesus with some news. They came with the news that their leader, John, had been beheaded. And so prior to our verses of scripture that we read, you hear the story of the beheading of John. And upon hearing that John, his cousin, his predecessor, has been beheaded, Jesus found himself trying to retreat to a secluded place. So he left and departed on a boat. And even though he was departing on a boat, to go to a deserted place, specifically the scripture says, to be alone. Isn't it something that very often when leaders have found themselves having to deal with a situation and feeling, recognizing the need to be alone and going through the things that they need to go through, taking the measures to be alone, their time of seclusion away from the crowd is snatched away from them because the crowd work follows them to the deserted place. A place that is supposed to be barren, a place that is supposed to be free from distractions, a place that is supposed to be free from work. Work follows them to that place. And I'm sure that there's some leaders that are listening that are saying, amen, pastor, you need to talk about that for a little bit because sometimes we need to just take a rest. Sometimes we need true, genuine, bona fide days off and the job just won't let me have them. Text messages, emails, the phone is ringing, smoke signals, they will find me wherever they are and they rob me of my time alone. I don't get the rest the respite, the rejuvenation, the renewal that I need. Work seeks me out and finds me. That's the testimony of Jesus. He sought to be alone, but yet work found him. And so not only did work find him, but a challenge found him. You see, the crowd that was so enamored with Jesus' teachings and his healing virtue always wanted to be around him. They didn't really care that the Savior needed to rest, that all of that God was in a human body and the human body would get tired. The human body would need some time of resting from its labor. No. You see, very often those that you lead don't always look at what's in your best interest before they look at what they need from you as their leader. I'm talking to leaders now. If you lead in any capacity, if you lead for any length of time, you will quickly find that this is true. Those that you lead will very often put their needs in front of your needs for rest, and resting. And so the crowd that Jesus ministered to put their desire to be around him before his need to be alone and get some rest and to grieve. You see, he had gotten some bad news and so he needed more than just rest. He needed space to just Grieve, not to have to be before the people, not to be under the spotlight. He needed some alone time to be away from folks so that he could properly grieve. And his grieving time was interrupted. So the crowd came. One of the things we see displayed here uh, in this passage of scripture is one of the most overlooked, unrecognized gifts in ministry, the gift of administration. Jesus displayed the gift of administration when this particular crisis of hunger showed itself and the lack of food. Hunger in and of itself is not a crisis, but hunger and the lack of food, the lack of resources to feed hunger, it becomes a crisis. And so Jesus was met with a crisis. Jesus in his time of grieving, his time of needing, alone time and space was met with a crisis. And so here's the interesting thing. 
passage of scripture, this telling of it in Matthew doesn't tell the source of the fish and the loaves of bread. But I want us to remember that the fish and the loaves of bread came from a boy's lunch. And I think it's significant that we recognize it for this reason. Because when, when crowds are mentioned in scripture, particularly when specific numbers are given, so if it says 4,000, if it says 5,000, if it says many, it is typically talking about men. And men are the most privileged in that society. It is not generally counting women or children, it is counting men. Women or children are the ones that are not recognized when they are counting people. So the gift, that is needed in this moment for the privileged is coming from the unprivileged. The one that is not counted in the census, the one who is not named by name, the one who is not among the thousands when the thousands are counted is the hands of the one from whom, from which, what is necessary to feed the privilege. God can use the unprivileged, the underprivileged, the muted voices to actually give what is necessary to those in power. This blessing did not come from nowhere. It came from somewhere. This little boy had to agree to share his lunch in order for these thousands of people to be fed. Did you hear that? This young boy had to cooperate and give up what was his for the impossible. Because I'm sure this little boy could not fathom that his little fish and loaves of bread could make a dent in the hunger of thousands of people. And yet, in spite of his inability to see his inability to fully understand his willingness to be obedient in a time of need was the catalyst for a miracle. That means whatever your status is, wherever you fit on the, in, the, in the scheme of the social stratum, in the matrix of society, wherever you find yourself, be not dismayed. Think that what you have, though poultry, um, is not enough, but remember this, what you have, little as it may be in your sight, when placed in the master's hands, is more than enough. Not just enough, not just sufficient, but more than enough that when placed in the master's hands and when the master gets finished multiplying it and using it, that there is some surplus, meaning there is something left over. So never hesitate to submit what you have to the master. Because in the master's hands, it is more than enough. For all leaders, please know this, that your gift has the ability to draw people away from their place of sustenance. I'm gonna say it again, give you a chance to write it down. Your gift, the gift that you possess, leader, has the ability to draw people away from their place of sustenance. In other words, people will leave the place of comfort, people will leave the place where they are provided from to be in your company because they are drawn to your gift. That means leaders, be careful. That means you have to be careful because the, the gifts that you are walking with has the power to draw people away sometimes from where they need to be. If you're not careful, you will find people following you that find themselves in need of the very things that they have left. And because they have left the place of sustenance, guess who they are looking for to provide for them now? You, the one who they have followed. Here's the other thing. Leaders need to be careful because just because you're gifted in one area does not prevent people from depending upon you to meet their needs in another area. See, they see that you're a great teacher, but what they need is someone with a healing ministry. But because you're such a great teacher, they are drawn to you. Their expectations is if you can do this, then you can do that. 
And there was a time, particularly in the black church, when the black pastor was the end all be all in the black community. If they had a legal problem, they would go to the black pastor. If somebody was sick and they couldn't get to the doctor, they would go to the black pastor. If they had an eviction notice taped to their door, they would go to the black pastor. There were not many things that they would not go to the pastor for. If they needed understanding of something, they would go to the pastor. And it could be something totally out of the pastor's realm of expertise. But because people had a need, they would go to the place and to the person that they felt could help them. Even if they came with unrealistic expectations. Leaders, that's a word for you. People will come to you with unrealistic expectations and will get mad at you because they are disappointed that you have not met their expectations. Even if it's something in an area where you are not gifted in, an area where you are not skilled in, it is not an area of your expertise and out of honesty you are telling them because of their disappointment and they have not recalibrated their expectations for the reality that you are not the end all be all, you are not Jesus, everything does not rise and fall with you, they can actually get mad with you because after coming to you their needs were not met. And here's another warning, write this down, leaders, write this down. Everyone that is drawn to you is not necessarily supporting you. Uh-oh. Not everyone that is drawn to you actually supports you. Some people are only drawn to you in order for you to support them. And they are drawn to you and their relationship with you is one where they drain you. They are drawn to you and they drain you. They are not drawn to you and they support you where they lift you up, they hold you up. They are drawn to you and their relationship with you ends with them draining you. But we thank God today that God can use anyone. God certainly does use leaders. But God can use the lowly. God can use the voiceless, the ones whose voices have been muted. God can use the ones who are invisible in the room. God can use the ones who have gone through something, who are hurting, who don't even see themselves as ample vessels for God to use. God can use them. God can use the nameless. God can use the anonymous. God can use them to bless those that are in power. And so one of the things a good leader has to do is what Jesus did. Recognize that there are some who have what is necessary for the moment. It doesn't always have to come from your hands. The greatest contribution can sometimes come from those that you lead and you don't have to always put the pressure on yourself. You have to have eyes to see and ears to hear and discernment to recognize where the answer is. For a leader to not have humility and to think that they're the only ones that can have all of the answers is a terrible thing. But for a leader to be cloaked in humility and to recognize that God has strategically placed people around me that possess gifts and graces just for this moment. What I'm saying to you, leader, is save yourself. Don't ever think that you have to do everything. Save yourself. Don't ever allow the people you lead to think that you have to do everything. Save yourself. Open your eyes to see and your ears to hear. Recognize the gifts that God has placed in your midst. It may be a little boy with fish and bread for his lunch that provides what is needed to feed the multitude. Will you pray with me? 
Lord, we thank you for your word and every single lesson contained in your word. We thank you for the ministry of John. We thank you for the ministry of Jesus. But today we also thank you for the willingness and the cooperation of a little boy. Because it's from the willingness and obedience of a little boy that thousands of hungry people got fed. Help us to see the little ones around us, oh God, that have the gifts that you bless them with that are needed for the moment. That we have eyes to see and ears to hear what you have placed in our midst. Amen. If you've heard this message today and you've never taken the time to reconcile your relationship with God through accepting the sacrifice of his son on Calvary for you, we want to take a moment to offer you an opportunity to do just that right here, this part of the service. This is a very simple thing to do, but it is the most significant thing that you can do in your life for your life. It is simply believing with your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross for you and receiving him as your Savior. So we want for you to just repeat this simple prayer. If you've never prayed it before, this is the formula that the scriptures give us. Just repeat after me. Dear Lord, I come to you as a sinner in need of saving. I recognize the sacrifice that was made for me on Calvary. Jesus died for my sins, the sins of my past, the sins of my present, and the sins of my future. He died for all of them. I receive him today as my savior and the sacrifice that was made for me. As well, I give him lordship of my life for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If this is the first time you ever prayed such a prayer, we invite you to contact us at the church. You can DM us or in the comment line, give us a way to contact you, to follow up. Follow up ministry is very important and we take it very seriously. It's important that you are connected to a church home. If you live in the Brooklyn area, we would invite you to be a part of our wonderful congregation here, Vanderbilt Park United Methodist Church, the Church of the Sweet, Sweet Spirit. And if you are somewhere else, out of state or in another city, we can certainly recommend a wonderful ministry that we are sure will embrace you and will nurture you in the things of the Lord. Please, please let us know if it's the first time that you've prayed that prayer so that we can minister to you. Let us all prepare now for our wonderful benediction. Lift that symbol of power in the air, that right clenched fist, and repeat after me, I leave this place full of power. I leave this place full of purpose. I leave this place in God's presence. Amen. At this time, we invite you to join us for our final selection. Everything's not working.
Amen.